All right, guys, we're going into my final bit of testing on the intersection just for verification purposes and a kind of a benefit of having different lighting conditions too, which will just add to the consistency of the performance. Uh, we did a good number of passes between the 69.25.2 car, 69.25.2, uh, which was right before the version 11 update. And we did uh, plenty of passes in Mew with 4.4 and saw all the performance there. However, uh, that's not all she wrote. So I'm going to go ahead and set this navigation point, which should carry us right along the path we want to test the forward edge of the intersection or uh, the original pathway. So we're gonna delete that second route. All right, and as with before, we've got our speed limit offset at plus 30%. So we're allowing the system to go 30% over the speed limit. Here we go, good left turn. And this is the stretch of road before the intersection. Why did that camera just randomly stop working? All right, cabin camera is recording again, making sure that camera is recording. All right, we're good. We are in average mode, I believe. Darn it. Oh, there it is, it's shifting there. Okay, we're in average for this test. Everything's fine. We've got our route pushed through. We'll go ahead and spread this. We're getting the deceleration chevrons, even at 30% offset, low lighting condition. Getting a little nag warning there. All right, we've got the chevrons early lead up to the stop sign. We've got the fade where it's showing that it's gonna stop and a beautiful stopping execution. Again, max speed setting, 73 kilometers an hour, or 30% over 56 kilometers an hour, which would be uh, 35 miles an hour plus 30% offset. So let's do it again. All right, this time, assertive mode. And I, I really don't think that the modes really matter in this case. But just switching up just so people see. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're coming down. We've got the decelerating chevrons to Dr. Know-It-All's point. Great video he did on this, by the way. And we've got the proper stopping mechanic, which is really good. We'll wave this guy over. He needs to go. We don't. He waited too long, and FSD started to move. <laughs> Out of courtesy, I took over. It likely would have stopped. I'm just... I'm trying to get through this quickly because I've got a very long drive home. <laughs> All right, this time around, we're gonna go on chill mode. And we should be all set. Activating, still maximum speed offset, which just gives the car full freedom to accelerate and do whatever it's gonna do. This was kind of the going point, that it needs to be able to react regardless of the speed offset. That way it can actually safely stop at this stop sign. And it's actually treating that whole road properly. And that's, that's perfect again. Um, have not had a failure today yet with this intersection on 4.4. Alright, we're just going to go back into average for the rest of the testing. We'll do this one two more times. Since we did it five times with my last video, we'll do it five times with this. And then we'll test westbound, maintaining maximum speed offset at 30% or 73 kilometers an hour. And I think, sorry, my brain kind of turned off because I'm like monitoring, making sure that I'm able to intervene if anything weird does happen. But very good, very good. We'll do it one more time. All right, test number five. Everything is showing as it should. The fade, the line of where it's showing that it's stopping at the intersection and we continue on. And I'm gonna go over to the right actually because this is the other failure point and we're gonna hit this real quick. All right, same case, maximum offset. So instead of 48 or 30 miles per hour, it's about 63 kilometers an hour or uh, about 39 miles an hour. And we are getting it through here and the stop is literally right after this bend here. We have decel. 
Incredible, man. And actually coming up to the line, which is proper. The stop sign may be way back there, but we are supposed to actually come up to the actual line. That was really freaking good. Let's do it again. We are engaged, 63 kilometers with 30% offset from 48. Flying through here. Oncoming car, treating that well, no excessive deceleration. Still about 60 clicks through here. Decel chevrons, projected stop on the identical, correcting to the final line. Beautiful. Oh, I love it. All right, let's do it again. Interesting, not much reaction to that car. Flying up here at 56 kilometers an hour, but we are deselling beautifully. Ugh. Touchdown stop sign. <laughs> Again! All right. Test number four slash nine overall after everything else today. It's kind of fun coming through here at uh, roughly 37 miles an hour. Not too excessive. And the same deceleration pattern. Slight uh, release of deceleration and then final stop. That's been really consistent. The behavior is mirrored with each pass and the repeatability is really, really, really good. And I'll explain that after we do our final pass and get my closing thoughts. All right, pass five westbound, pass 10 overall on this session. And then I am actually gonna go hit uh, the second failure point they showed me today because I think I got too caught up in the excitement and I failed to actually send a report to Tesla. So I'm going to go ba I'm going to go back uh, for brevity and make sure that I give that to Tesla. And as expected, little hiccup there, which has happened every time, little slight pause of deceleration and then a perfect stop. So that is really good. This guy's just blowing straight through the stop sign on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm so sorry <coughs> after all the testing today for that to happen oh yeah let me kill our, our speed offset we don't need to be going that fast anymore testing's complete I want to return our speed to normal oh my gosh I can't believe we just saw that <laughs> so to the point of the question being is Tesla safer than a human I still think yes, um, I stand by that. There are edge cases that will come up where we as the drivers need to get involved. Um, I was having a little back and forth with uh, a guy on Twitter that we've, we've interacted for a while, um, and I don't think he's wrong in his comments, but he was really trying to iterate after seeing my video about working with the Don Project today that, you know, the discussion's over, it's about if it's safer than a human or not, that's it. and. I agree with the points about it being safer, but I, I, I never agree that we should close off discussion. Uh, that, that doesn't make any sense to me. It's okay to have disagreements and agree to disagree, but leave the discussion open. Never just assume it's closed or try to shut somebody out by saying, end of discussion. Um, that's just not a logical thing to do. It's, it's not a sensible statement when it comes to important topics, but I won't rant on that too long. The system did really well. I'm just kind of driving around as I chat with you guys, closing thoughts. Uh, it was an incredible day. Uh, big thank you and shout out to Arthur and Dan with the Dawn Project for basically humoring me all day. You know, they met up with me at the infamous Crook's Corner and they are super cool dudes. Um, I think they deserve a lot more highlight for the 
hard work. Honestly, to go out and to repeatedly test these things, like it, it's a lot of mental energy, physical energy, resources. I appreciate the diligence of the experiment. And I think that they need proper credit for that. We can all have our disagreements, like I said a second ago, about everything. But I am giving them 100% props for the way that they do their testing and how much they go out of their way to test. And I mean, <laughs> Yaman made a great point earlier uh, in the beginning of the week that I had to drive to Santa Barbara to find an edge case like this to test because the system's getting that good. I think that's true. You know, the system is getting really, really good. Um, I'm, I'm not as much a fan of 4.4 as I am of 4.2 but it is getting really good. And I'm glad I came back to verify these tests. And I wanna say real quick as well, I know I'm just talking forever, but this is important too. After uh, Nick Hill did his tests with Tesla Boomer Mama, and he ran with Arthur, Arthur as well, sorry, I keep messing that up, my apologies. Um, he was making comments about it being fixed then, you know, like less, like 24 to 48 hours later. And being the inherent skeptic I am, I was very hesitant. I wanted to see that video proof. And the videos that were shown of singular attempts, to me, that does not pass the standard of the burden of proof. When it comes to a claim, the evidence for said claim needs to meet or exceed the weight of the claim and the counter arguments. And what I mean by that is that it is very easy to have a one-off scenario and say it's fixed, but anybody with a skeptical mind is gonna say, hang on, I need to see more of that. I need to see repeatable results, which is something that I hammered from the beginning there. And I hope it didn't come off too harsh. That's not me trying to discredit people. That's me trying to explain the standard of evidence required when it comes to doing experiments in a scientific way. A one-off is as useless in the positive as it is in the negative. It's junk data in that sense. If it's one time good out of 10 times bad, the one time good is an outlier. And in this case, doing it 10 times perfectly, it adds so much more weight to the claim that it's fixed than a single trip. And that's the only point I'm trying to make. I know some people don't have the patience for that, the resources mentally, physically, time in the day to do this kind of testing, which is why I love to be able to do this and to meet up with people who love this and to nerd out with fellow data geeks about this. Um, all right, I'm gonna get off my rant now. Great day, awesome tests. Please let me know what you think down below about all of it. I'm probably gonna be splitting this up into, uh, well, th this testing will all be one video, but then the second test we did will be another video, and then the final test we did, I am waiting as I promised them until they come out with their video, and then I'll put mine out kind of with theirs together. Uh, but yeah, that's all. I gotta do this quick report on the second failure to make sure I get that to Tesla because I don't wanna have left that unattended. And then I will be making the very long journey back home to San Diego, which probably is going to put me home at midnight or closer or after. <laughs> Darn it. Anyways, take care. <laughs>